What we do is basically we try to help the chip makers keep up with Moore's Law. They have been doing a terrific job for the last 40 years. Every time you buy a new cell phone, every time you get a new battery, every time you, you, know, you look at a piece of storage device, it's becoming better and cheaper. And the main driver for this is that the chip makers have been able to make the transistors smaller and smaller. So now they're hitting this kind of wall where you start seeing quantum mechanical effects pop up everywhere. So we need to simulate that in order to have them be able to design the chips of the future. The problem we're solving is we try to simulate the flow of electrons through nanotransistors and similar nanostructures. That is, if you, if you build a chip today, these chips are so small that you need to do quantum mechanics to understand what's going on. And that's basically what we want to do. We want to see how these chips behave when you have fl uh, electrons flowing through them or not flowing through them, how you can design them. But it also applies to batteries and memory cells, things like that. So ultimately, what you need to do is a very computationally intense task um, is you, uh, yeah, you solve a very large linear system and eigenvalue problem. And that's basically what we use the GPUs for. So we have this code that runs very well on many, many nodes. And what we did for this specific piece of research is that we put the innermost part of that very large parallel loop onto the GPUs. And yeah, that basically for us was quite the breakthrough because we've been able to use these GPUs to really outpace existing solutions that would tackle the same problem. So if you want to simulate that flow of electrons in these nanotransistors, what you need to do is you integrate for many, many different energies that could potentially flow through the structure. You contribute, basically compute the contribution of that specific energy. To do that, you need to solve an eigenvalue problem, which is what we do on the CPUs. And then you need to solve a very large, sparse system, which is what we counterintuitively do on the GPUs, because we invented that algorithm that would allow for sparse linear systems to be solved on the GPUs. And that turned out to be a very fruitful approach for us once we were able to transform our problem such that it suits the computational capabilities of GPUs, we really could yeah, get a huge speed up from just using, using that technology. So where we want to go from here would be that there are some physical aspects that we currently do not have in our model that are also not easy to include into the model, but that will probably be the next step. Things like scattering, electrons interacting with electrons, electrons interacting with the grid of that structure. Um, yeah, that would make the results even more physical.